Hey guys, welcome to DNA Repair. We are going to talk about a bunch of different repair systems. You will be responsible for knowing mismatch, direct, base excision, and nucleotide excision. We are not going to cover homologous recombination or non-homologous end joining. We are also going to cover DNA proofreading. So we're going to add that to our list. And that is by DNA polymerase. So let's go. We're going to talk about errors that occur during replication. And they are very rare, but they do occur. And so we have mechanisms to fix these. The first mechanism is called proofreading. Proofreading is actually a function of DNA polymerase that occurs while replication is happening. So it corrects errors made during replication, and it corrects them during replication. DNA polymerase has this 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity, which can recognize mismatched bases and then cut them back out. So that's the first one we're going to talk about. If errors do slip through proofreading, there are other methods of fixing them. One of them is called methyl-directed mismatch repair, and it occurs a little bit differently in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, and we're going to talk about the mechanism in, in bacteria because that's the one we know the most about. First, we're going to look at DNA polymerase proofreading. DNA polymerase proofreading is actually part of DNA polymerase, and here he is shown in purple. So here's our DNA polymerase. He's just cruising along, doing DNA replication, minding his own business. So if we were thinking about prokaryotic replication, right, this would be DNA polymerase 3, the guy that's just building leading strands, building lagging strands. If a wrong base was added, as you could see here, this A does not belong with this G, then the DNA polymerase itself has that 3' prime to 5' prime exonuclease activity and can cut that guy right out of there and then move on and continue adding the correct ones. And so that's all DNA polymerase proofreading is. So lots and lots of mistakes are fixed just by DNA polymerase itself during proofreading. Any mistakes that do not get fixed can be repaired by mismatch repair. This example of mismatch repair is in prokaryotes. We don't know exactly how it's targeted to the new strand in eukaryotes, so we're only going to talk about prokaryotes. So here we are with our right DNA with a mismatch added to the new strand. So a mistake was made that, that DNA polymerase proofreading did not catch. Now, in prokaryotes, there's a specific sequence that's methylated in uh, all strands of prokaryotic DNA, except for the very new strands that are added during replication. When replication's over, the methyl transferases go through and methylate up that new strand. But as soon as, as, soon as replication happens, it's, it's not immediate. So there's a detection between the old strand and the new strand. The old strand has methyl groups on this GATC sequence. The new strand does not. The complex recognizes this and cuts. This word nick actually means cuts, breaks phosphodiester bonds. Right? So cuts those apart. Okay? And they call that a nick because it's in one strand. It's only on the new strand. It's not on the old strand or the template strand. And exonuclease chews that away. So all of this disappears, that new strand, from here and to where that mismatch is. And then, guess what? DNA polymerase can just fill that back in. Now, which side, mind you, is DNA polymerase going to add to? What do you think? Which end can DNA polymerase only add to on that existing new strand where things were removed? Yes, yes, DNA polymerase can only add to juicy 3' prime ends, so it's going to polymerase around to here, right? And then guess what? It's going to bump into that other nucleotide, and can it make that phosphodiester bond there? No, because that's an existing 5' prime phosphate, an existing 3 prime OH. So yes, our good friend ligase, right, right there, has to make that bond. Yay, ligase. So this obeys the rules of all the things that we talked about already in all these processes of replication transcription, right? Complementary base pairing, DNA polymerases can only add to 3 prime ends, ligase will always make that 
bond uh, that last seal for an existing 5 prime phosphate, 3 prime OH. And now we have repaired this mismatch using this mechanism, so we know we fixed the correct strand, the new strand rather than the existing old strand. And that, my friends, is mismatch repair. Okay, some damage bases can be directly repaired, and we call that, funny how they should say that, direct repair. And so in this case, uh, one of the main ones is called photolyase, and photolyase can repair those thymine dimers that are induced by UV light. That's what we talked about in the end part of that mutation lecture that I captured for you guys. There's also this other crazy thing that I'm not going to ask you the name of that can do the same sort of thing on an alkylated base. And so we don't have a picture of how photolyase works, but we know it can do thymine dimers. And then it works very similar to this other mechanism where it, if this is a base that's screwed up because it's got this methyl group on it, a methyl transferase just really whacks it off, lose that, and now we're back to our normal guanine. Okay, so that would be an example of direct repair, right? Because it directly repaired it, didn't do anything else. Which is much different than mismatch repair, right? You had to cut out all those bases and replace them all. Yes. Okay, for base excision repair, um, it first removes the base, so actually the, the nitrogenous base, right? The cytosine, uh, thymine, adenine, right? And then the rest of the nucleotide, then the sugar and the phosphate, okay? Again, polymerase has to fill in on the three prime end, and again, the five prime end has to be attached by ligase. And one of the main things this fixes is thymine dimers, also some of those chemically modified bases that we talked about. And so let's take a look at some pictures. And so here we have a damaged base. You can see it's not the right shape. And so we first clip that guy out, right? Just this guy gets pooped out. And now we have an apurinated site, right? Or a pure or a pyrimidinic, depending on if it's a purine or a pyrimidine. See how that is? So it's actually naked, but you can see the sugar and the phosphate still sits there. This comes out, and then it clips out, right? Breaks the phosphodiester bonds on both sides. So now we have a, three, a free 3' prime OH and a free 5' prime phosphate. And so where do you think the polymerase puts the DNA polymerase part of this repair process works? Yes, it uses that 3' prime OH to make that, that bond right there. That's now a phosphodiester bond. But look, this side... The 3' prime OH and this 5' prime phosphate, there's no bond there yet. So what has to happen? Yes, yes, right there, that's where ligase has to function. Right, and so ligase made that last seal or that last phosphodiester bond because it was an existing 3' prime OH and an existing 5' prime phosphate. That is ligase's job. And that, my friends, was base excision repair system. Now we're going to look at nucleotide excision repair system, which you'll just need to remember the difference between them. So base excision, remember it starts with just the base, and then it pulls out just one nucleotide, just one sugar phosphate. In nucleotide excision repair, it actually pulls out the entire nucleotide and lots of them. But... In the same way, DNA polymerase uses the 3' prime end to refill, and again, that last attachment is from ligase. Again, can do lots of different fixing, thymine dimers, chemically modified bases. Uh, it's in both eukes and prokes. Again, we understand it better in prokaryotes, so those are the systems we're going to talk about. Same with base excision repair. It was prokes. Okay, my friends. So here's our double-stranded DNA, and they're showing the damage as just this red. They're not showing us the nucleotides, which is lame. But, uh, so here's the complex, the NER, the nucleotide excision repair complex. It recognizes this mistake, and it separates the two strands. How does it separate them? It has to break hydrogen bonds. And what do we need to have in there if we ever have single-stranded DNA? Yes, our single-stranded DNA binding proteins, otherwise it wouldn't stay apart, so we need to keep them apart to get this process to go. 
And what happens? An enzyme cleaves the strand on both sides, a nick, breaking of the phosphodiester backbone, right? The phosphate sugar backbone. This whole chunk gets thrown away and chewed up, okay? Now this gap is filled in by DNA polymerase and sealed by DNA ligase. So which end does DNA polymerase use? Hmm, the three prime end or the five prime end? Hmm, I don't know. DNA polymerase loves 3 prime OH, so it's going to fill this way with an arrow. Make sure you guys can do this because these will be questions that I will be asking you. This is the 5 prime phosphate. Who has to come to the rescue here? E -e 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 -e. Ligase. Yay, phosphodiester bonding. And that, my friends, is nucleotide excision repair. Well, what's left? Well, looky here. Here's a little project for you guys. This is going to be something you're going to do. It's a nucleotide excision repair problem. And this isn't part of your uploaded lecture because I just made it. So um, you can turn me off, put me on pause, and take a moment to add yourself a new slide and type out this little sequence. And really, the sequence doesn't matter except for... Um, the region that we removed, right? So we're pretending like we are nucleotide excision repair. We see a thymine dimer right here. Oh no, sadness happens. We got to get rid of that guy. And so we cleaved out that entire region and we're left with what we have here. And now I want you to write out the nucleotides added by polymerase in the five prime to three prime direction, right? So the five prime end right? You need to start here, writing whichever ones are filled in. And then what bond and where does ligase act? You can circle it, put a big ligase ax here, and what kind of bond does it make? Okay, and then I want you to screenshot and upload to whatever on Wednesday. And, um... I don't know, it'll be called DNA Repair Homework or something like that. So you can look for that in Moodle to upload this guy. I want you to have that done before Sunday at midnight. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, get it? Get it? Yeah? Mm-hmm, yeah? Okay. And then for our last little table, just some fun facts. Some of the crazy genetic diseases that are associated with defects in DNA repair... Uh, xeroderma pigmentosum is one of the main ones, which is um, super sensitivity to sunlight because we don't have nucleotide excision repair. And so those thymine dimers and all that UV damage are not uh, repaired. We only have base excision repair and the photolyase repair, which apparently is not as good as the nucleotide excision repair based on the phenotype from these individuals. And then the rest of these little fun... Uh, genetic diseases, which if you take human genetics 468 next year, you'll learn more and more about all of these really cool genetic disorders. I will leave you with this picture. Um, this is an individual with that xeroderma pigmentosa where there's multiple um, lesions on their skin. They need to stay out of the sun as much as possible, but even so, any sort of UV radiation causes uh, DNA damage that cannot be repaired. And that's all I have for DNA Repair. I hope you've enjoyed this lecture, and I will be seeing you soon. Thank you.